Welcome to It's a Woman's World, where we'll meet achieving women making a difference in our community. I'm Carolyn Bruna. Our guest is Dee Casio, psychotherapist, life retirement and re-career coach. Welcome, Dee. Thank you, Carolyn. Thank you for inviting me to be here. Uh, well, you are welcome, and I'm very excited to have you here because uh, you're a friend, mm -hmm. and you're also uh, professionally we're aligned from the National Speakers Association. Right, so, yeah, we are. You, you do presentations mm -hmm. and coaching and um, speaking. Yes. So, yeah, we have lots in common, which yes. is exciting and fun. Yes. So, um, also, I want to start, though, today mm -hmm. uh, with your background a little bit and how you got into this career. Well, I began my career, I come from a family of teachers, so I, you know how our families affect us. Mm -hmm. So I started my career as a teacher, and as I, after I taught for a few years, I realized that children were coming to school with not only uh, family problems, but also learning problems. Mm -hmm. And I thought to make a difference, I really wanted to work with them in that way. So I went back to school and got mm -hmm. my master's degree in counseling, and having completed that education, I moved to this area, to the metro area, and I got my first job as a high school counselor, which I did for 15 years. And that was quite a, a training ground for me because I was working with teachers, the students, the parents, and just learned a lot about what, what children go through in the educational process and how I could help them better. Mm -hmm. Right. And then um, from there, how did you get into the retirement uh, coaching, though, and counseling? Well, that's an interesting story. I, my husband one day said to me, he wanted to talk about retirement. He was getting mm -hmm. ready to, tran to turn 60, mm -hmm. and I was in my mid-50s. Mm -hmm. And I really wasn't ready to talk about retirement. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm just, I'm, I'm in my stri stride with my business, right. and I'm really enjoying helping people. Mm -hmm. Oh, isn't and 50 the new 20 or well, something? Well, you <laughs> were think, just a but... baby. I mean, really. <laughs> exactly right. <laughs> and so I really didn't want to talk about this. And But what happened was my family became my teachers. There are always things happen oh. in life mm. that set you back on the right course. And what happened was several of my family members began be becoming challenged with some illnesses. Mm. And what it did was it got my attention around the fragility of life. And, and so I decided that I needed to look not only be not to be stuck in the present, but also to be looking in the future. Mm -hmm. So I, I began to explore ways that I could create more flexibility in my life because as a therapist, as you know, there you're tied to your office and mm -hmm. clients want to see you in your office. So I was looking for a, a, a career path that would allow me to use my skills, mm -hmm. however, to have more flexibility. And I found coaching. Mm -hmm. So I proceeded to get my training in life coaching and then I, in wanting to learn more about retirement, I did a life uh, coaching training as a retirement coach and a re-career coach mm -hmm. and, and really relaxed into the whole idea of retirement. Mm -hmm. And as a, con as a result of that, mm -hmm. my husband and I have been able to talk about retirement and we are on our path. We bought a condo in Tampa eight years ago and we are practicing retirement. We go down there every month from September to June for 10 days, and we practice retirement. I do work down there, but I also have fun. Mm -hmm. I play and hmm. relax, yeah. relax into it. Oh. You know, I'm very impressed with your explanation, and as you were talking, I was taking some notes uh, that you actually became a model for teaching people what they should do. And the first is you were saying that you're looking for a career with flexibility. Yes. And the second is that you're thinking and always planning ahead. Uh, so you wanted a career that had some transition mm -hmm. in it. Mm -hmm. And the third was that you're trying on the lifestyle. You're right. kind of practicing, practicing. retirement. And mm -hmm. so that's, those are three really important factors to and teach people. And the other people. thing is I really was my first client. <laughs> I love that. I mean, I, <laughs> yeah, so it's always good to know yes. more about what you're, you're right, helping what you're people doing. with. Right, right. Yeah, exactly. That's great. Yeah. But let's talk about now our generation. Okay. okay. I guess we people mm -hmm. know at this point we're baby boomers. Mm -hmm. um, can you give us some information that defines the baby boomers demographics and, and re I guess, how it affects the retirement trend? Sure. Well, there are approximately 78 million 
boomers born between 1946 and 1964. Mm -hmm. And we have the largest generation that has ever been born as a result of the war. And so just recently, the millennials have bypassed us just by this much. Mm -hmm. But in, in 2011, 12,000 people started turning 65 on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. And that's like 4 million people a year. So you can imagine the extent to which our generation is influencing what's happening now and in the future. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we are the most educated uh, generation. We are the most skilled and experienced. I'm very proud of our generation. We've ex our, our life expectancy is 25 to 30 years, which is a long time based on our grandparents and our parents' lives. But 25 and to 30 years, you mean in, 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 uh, longer, beyond, than, longer than Longer than previous generations. Oh. So it's almost like we have a second, another career beyond traditional work to think about. So I call it the retirement career. Oh, I like that. Yeah. yeah. So we, we get to think about how we want that to look. And so we're, we're really redefining this transition in our lives. We don't have any role models, really, for this transition. Hmm. And so the question is, oh. what is, what's next for us? If we have all this time, what's next? Oh, I see. Yeah. Is that um, where you got your title, a re-career coach? Yes. Uh huh. That, because that we have a, another career coming up. Mm -hmm. Basically. Um, basically, that, we have another huh. career coming up. We have more time to do things that we really want to do, yeah. because our our work in terms of building a career, raising families, uh, you know, mm -hmm. doing what we do to, in our lives, just all the developmental stages, are are pretty much complete by the time we're in our fifties and sixties. And so now it's mm -hmm. our time. Mm -hmm. Right. And but often we're unprepared, you know, for... Yeah, um, that's so true. Mm -hmm. uh, well, tell us a little bit more about now, why are we unprepared? I know you said we don't have any models, but kind of yeah. go into that a little bit. What else? Well, my research has revealed is that 60% of us are, have saved for retirement, but only 27% of us are really not comfortable in terms of our money outliving us. And the second thing is we don't really have any role models because our parents' generation and our grandparents, the expectation was we weren't going to live long enough to really plan for anything substantial. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we just, they, they retired to relaxation and leisure. And because our generation has much more to offer communities in a lot of different ways and, and time to do different things with our lives, we're going to need more things in our lives that have purpose and meaning. Hmm. And so I experience when I'm talking to people more anxiety and worry about, sometimes it shows up as money. They, they, they say that it's about money, but when you find out that their financial planner says they're fine, it's really about how are they going to repurpose their skills mm -hmm. and create a life that has purpose as they move into these later years of their lives. Mm -hmm. Because there's going to be a gap between traditional retirement, which is actually extended now to more like 65, but it used to be 62. Mm -hmm. And if we're going to be living into our late 70s, early to mid ladies for women, what are we going to do with that time? Yeah. How are we going to spend it? Mm -hmm. It's a long time to play golf and <laughs> have lunches and Yes, that's no. true. It's interesting. It reminds you of someone I interviewed, gosh, a long time ago, and she said, uh, "Going visiting a museum is only fun when it's thrown in between other things. That, and that, mm -hmm. So what you're saying now reminds me of that. Although um, we can't also give the um, opinion that everybody needs to work or have a, a second it, career because exactly. part of it uh, that has to be, or maybe all of it, depending on the person, mm -hmm. uh, leisure and lifestyle. But you're saying even in there, we need something that is, I liked your words, that was a purposeful and productive. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Because you have, a, there's a formula that I like to, to share, and that mm -hmm. is with a good, strong financial plan, because we do need money to live. That's sure. a reality. Mm -hmm. But that's where, where all the focus has been over the years. Mm -hmm. Plus, we're adding a retirement lifestyle portfolio mm -hmm. 
And that is the second part of the formula, which will lead us to a successful experience in our later years. Ah. So it sounds like this, um, uh, what's called retirement lifestyle portfolio mm -hmm. is the one that shows us how to be purposeful and productive. Exactly. Oh, great. Right. So go into that for us now. Tell us what is this well, portfolio. You know, we have different arenas that we live in every single day of our lives, and I call it the wheel of life. Mm. And so those six areas are uh, work and or volunteering, mm -hmm. taking care of our health, financial responsibilities, relationships, doing something that is fun and leisure, and then personal growth. How are we growing each day as we move along our life's path? Mm -hmm. And if you think about that model, if you're functioning and, and creating um, goals, and they don't have to be high you know, goals, we're, not, we're, we're trying to f find a balance between work and a leisurely experience after we finish work, a leisurely retirement. Not a, ret a, a retirement to leisure necessarily, but a leisurely retirement. So we're redefining that too as a generation. Hmm. So you want to relax into it while you're doing something purposeful. Hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, that's very interesting because I haven't heard that before. Mm. And um, so you've covered the work and career, your six life arenas, you had mm -hmm. said, and um, health and wellness. Of course, that's a very big deal. You yes. have to be healthy enough to... Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. If yeah. you don't have your health, mm. the retirement is going, isn't going to be of the quality that you'd like it. Mm. And often people wait until after they leave work to start. They'll say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work on this when I don't have this hectic schedule. Yeah. But by that time, you know, sometimes your body is mm -hmm. yeah, it's so resilient to, own to a point, you know. <laughs> True. To, Let's get on to So I wanted to ask, though, how can baby boomers prepare? Uh, how can we prepare for mm -hmm. all this, this important time in our life? And we're kind of talking about it as well. But mm -hmm. um, because we, have, we don't have the blueprint, we don't have the role mm -hmm. models, where your portfolio is preparing us, right, and preparing by seeing mm -hmm. these six Gro growth in these six areas, mm -hmm. is that what you're saying? Uh, personal growth? And, and, and the way, a good way to look at this is that I, I coined an acronym in one of my newsletters. And mm -hmm. what it, it's, and the acronym is work provides. So if you look at all the things that work provides, we're looking at wages, order, the structure, oh, the harmony, the routine, relationships, knowledge. We gain a lot of knowledge from our work because we're going to workshops, we're training, we're learning new technology. There's purpose mm -hmm. for, for what it provides. Uh, there's identity. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. And, and it provides uh, a recognition. We get recognition from what we do. We have uh, some sense of direction. We have experiences. There's a stability about what we do because we can count on going to work and, and we know what we're supposed to, be, to do there. Mm -hmm. the, the, some of the anxiety is around the fact that when we don't have a defined job or work that we know we're supposed to do every day because mm -hmm. it's defined by someone else, yeah. then it becomes our responsibility to find what that is for ourselves. And I so see. if you look at what work provides, and let's take the first one, wages. If you look at the model, work and career and volunteering, that's where you may not earn a wage, but that is your work of life. How are mm -hmm. you going to mm -hmm. make your community, your life better in what way? Yeah. Whether you get paid for it or not, you don't have to get paid for it but maybe you have a passion or there's a cause that you want to pursue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You have a family member that's been ill and you want to raise money for that. I mean, there are all different ways to find work in your life. I see. And so that productivity becomes part of um, something that we need to do for ourselves mm -hmm. and in order to feel productive and purpose, have a purpose even in our retirement to feel good about it. it can, yes. The purpose can be social 
or it can be uh, an after uh, job job type thing. And, yeah. then, and then the uh, whole issue of identity, because a lot of our identity is created by the work that we do. But if you are finding other ways to use your skills, uh, you're kind of redefining your identity. You're expanding your identity right. to include more of who you are in uh, general. That leads us nicely. We're going to take a break. But then we're going to go uh -huh. to the second half and talk about um, women. Uh, so you'll talk more about the identity okay, there, great. I think. We'll break for a short public service announcement. back to It's a Women's World. We're speaking with Dee Casey, a retirement and re-career coach. Hi, Dee. Uh, we're focusing the mm -hmm. second half on women and women's perspective, so let's just jump right in there. Uh, okay. With the whole retirement process, what is and what should the woman's perspective and role be? Well, you know, Carolyn, I'm not an expert in financial planning. I leave that to the experts. But I, I discovered this book in an article that I read in the name of its uh, Prince Charming, Not So Charming. Oh. And it's written by a financial planner, a female financial planner. And I think it's, it's a novel form, but it's based on some of the clients, I'm sure. You can tell that she's worked on. She's we've woven that in. And there's some statistics at the end of this book that I think are really significant. And one of them is that 9 out of 10 women will be solely responsible for their financial well-being in their lifetime, adult women. Mm -hmm. And the average age for women being widowed is 56 years old, and only 41% of working women have a retirement plan, have a 401k. So I think when you uh, look at the future of someone that may not always have a spouse available mm -hmm. to, you know, um, share finances with, how will uh, a woman be able to stand alone and be able to support herself and be prepared, especially at this life stage, if she's not working? And, and I think being more thoughtful and having autonomy, we're more educated, first of all. Right. We're more educated so we have the means in order to support ourselves. We can, we can work. And, we, and because our generation has had dual um, uh, roles in working, mm -hmm. that it's women as well as men have contributed to the, to the household. Mm -hmm. And I think that gives more women a sense of accomplishment, personal power. Yeah, and, yeah. yeah. No, that's uh, interesting, and I'm yeah. uh, very surprised at the young age that women mm -hmm. are left, if married women mm -hmm. uh, are left um, without a husband. Uh, that's very young for yeah. me. Yeah, and and you know that could be due to divorce and or death. Ah, okay. So I just oh, want to you know mm -hmm. specify yeah, that. Yeah. yeah, right, right. And then from there, that's the perspective that we bring. Mm -hmm. um, and then expand a little bit on the role, though, that we have from that perspective. Right. Okay. Well, as you know, we as a generation, I think women, because we're more educated and experienced, we have, and raised families, there's, we wanted to do it all. And we worked and we raised, helped raise children because our husbands participated at some level. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so our role has been often caretaking and and worrying about everybody else but ourselves. Yeah. And so this is a time in our lives where we need to look at not necessarily being, we've been selfless, but now we need to be looking at maybe being a little bit selfish in terms of taking care of ourselves. All the work is, you know, the work is done around career and raising a family, and now it's, it's, it's a woman's turn to really think about what does she want in her life at this point in time? What does she want this stage of her life to look like? Mm -hmm. So having conversations with uh, a spouse, if you're married, or a partner, if you have a different lifestyle, mm -hmm. and, and, and really defining what you want it to look like, what you want your retirement to look like, your spouse would have 
what they want theirs to look like, and then a, a collaborative plan where you do things together. Mm. And if you're single, it's important to talk to friends, to family, and and talk through some of your, your goals and your ideas about what you want the stage of life to look like. I think it's important to have a team. So you have a team of your financial planner, you've got someone that's going to help you with the legal aspects of your planning in terms of will and estate planning, and you're t wanting to take good care of your health, so you're collaborating with your physicians. They're all different. You need a team mm -hmm. as you progress in the stage of your life. Hmm. That's very interesting. And I'm glad mm -hmm. you mentioned singles because I was thinking of that as you were yeah. speaking. Uh, if you don't have a partner um, and have been single your wife, and who do you consult with, talk with, uh, to get all these plans together so that you can prepare and you're mm -hmm. flexible enough to absorb whatever comes your way as you get older and retire? Yeah, you know, that's, yeah. I like the team idea. It's great. Yes. Yeah. And so then... Uh, you do see a number of women uh, mm -hmm. talking in your coaching. Mm -hmm. So let's just mention uh, some of the things that why would a wife want to come or a spouse or a partner want to come to the coaching session, let's say, um, with their other spouse? <laughs> okay. Well, you know, if a, if a husband calls me and he's close to retirement and wants to come in and he said, you know, I want to bring my wife along because she, she, she's concerned. Well, she's, come in, she's coming in because she's concerned. She's genuinely concerned about how he's going to fare when he's not working anymore because she can already see mm -hmm. that there's some level of worry and anxiety because he's expressing it at some level. And so you some, or, some or she. The, or she. It could be also <laughs> that right. women. Sure. I will be the first to tell you that it's, it's, a, it's not as easy as, as everyone thinks it is. Yeah. There's a whole lot more to it. Mm -hmm. And so she's really genuinely concerned about, about him or he about her. Yeah. However, she's also wanting, because of that nurturing, caretaking, natural role, and we're such great multitaskers, mm -hmm. she wants to make sure that she can maintain her autonomy and her territory in this stage of life for herself yeah. so it doesn't get impacted by ne his needing to have her planning. Um, she doesn't have to worry about him if he's got his own plan in place. Mm -hmm. So that's that's really basically the concern that that mm -hmm. that a, a, a wife or a, a partner would come in about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So as a spouse, we need to uh, have our autonomy, but then we also need to mesh it with our spouse or partner. Mm -hmm. But then they would also need their autonomy. Mm -hmm. ah, it's exactly. actually quite complex. Yes, it is. I didn't realize all that. Yes. Yeah, yeah that's very good. A lot more, <laughs> a lot more complicated than <laughs> we'd yeah. like to think. Yeah, true, true. And since we were talking originally about um, uh, partners and marriages, mm -hmm. um, when we're dealing with finances, many of the times uh, in the past, particularly women, let that go to the, if it were yeah. a married uh, mm -hmm. husband and wife couple, to the husband. Mm -hmm. uh, and yet now that's changing too, as well as these other aspects that we're talking about that are mm -hmm. changing. So um, how do we so, deal with all this? Yeah. yeah and well, the, well, the old the mindset, you're right. There's an old mindset that the husband is in charge and he, he makes more money, so he makes ma uh, many of the major financial decisions. Mm -hmm. But because women have, so many of our generation, the women in our generation have worked, we share that responsibility, you know, and, and that involvement. Mm -hmm. So it's shifted in our generation. There's still some of it left mm -hmm. where women yeah. look for men to take care of them. But again, we know that that isn't always we can't. We don't have control of that. Mm -hmm. And that's kind so. of the easy way out, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> it? It does sound old-fashioned, mm -hmm. the fairy tale yes. type thing. But I guess that just doesn't work anymore. Yeah. 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 And and um and and you know, there's that old saying: behind every man, there's a woman. Well, I like to think that by each man's side is a woman. That that women and men and women, husbands and wives, partners work together yeah. to accomplish their goals in life and, and their lifestyle that they want to create for themselves all the way along. You know. Yeah, I, I like that. And also I think um, 
The other way was a, a dependency that, as because we've mm -hmm. had careers, uh, people don't want that dependency mm -hmm. anymore. Mm -hmm. And you don't feel as good about your own uh, independence, you know, or, or your, yourself without some independences, actually. Right. Yeah. Because that builds confidence. You have the, the, being more independent makes you more confident that you can ah, survive yeah. and you can do well with or without a partner. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's, yeah. There was yeah. something else that you mentioned that I was thinking about. You said that the divorce rate of those 50 mm -hmm. plus, 50 up, uh, is one in four. Yes. That's yeah. very high. Can you tell us why you think that is and, and kind is. of explain that a little bit? Yeah. And th now, this could be, again, married people, unmarried people, yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. uh, partners. Yeah. Exactly right, whether you're, depending on your lifestyle. Mm -hmm. But uh, it, it's a, a study done several years ago where um, what's ha one, in, and, and I think the, the significance of this is that one in four of people over 50 makes it significant because ah. that's a, you know not the whole population oh i see however okay. what happens is i think couples get so um, focused on raising children and being in their, working in their careers that they lose a connection with each other they don't even realize it's happening mm. and uh, and then children start growing or growing up and going off to college or working getting married and all of a sudden, there the two of them are together. Mm -hmm. And if the connection hasn't been nurtured, they can look at each other and go, well, who are you? Yeah. <laughs> you know, what happened here? Mm -hmm. And one, unfortunately, one in four can't recreate that connection. And, and so they move towards divorce. And, and often, the, uh, the, I think another important uh, aspect of this is that if you're retired, if you're retiring or retired and you're not happy with your life, sometimes people blame it on the, on the marriage, but it's not really about that. It's about, it's about them. Mm -hmm. But that can also lead to struggles in a relationship. So I always encourage people to get the help they need and, and try to make it work. Mm -hmm. And if it doesn't, well, you know, you've done your best. Mm -hmm. and yeah. Because, you know, we get philosophical as we get older. You know, life is <laughs> too do. short mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. be unhappy. Yeah. And yeah. Um, Okay, from somebody watching this show, a viewer, what, give me two important things that you want them to remember about mm -hmm. the re retirement process. Okay. Uh, failing to plan is planning to fail. So I really encourage people to plan at least three to five years before they're going to retire so that they can begin to kind of relax into the whole idea and that mindset and practice retirement. Mm -hmm. And for them to be able to retire from work but not from life. You can work if you want to after retirement and if you don't want to, you don't have to. You can do, it's your choice. Mm -hmm. But right. to really, to really think good. about what kind of legacy they want to live mm -hmm. and then leave. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. And if one, people want to contact you, mm -hmm. uh, where should they go? How can they get a hold of you? Well, I have a, a website, www.retirementlifestylestrategies.com, mm -hmm. and great. all my information is there. Mm -hmm. And I know that also you have uh, some e-books, uh, yes. is that correct, that they can download Yes. And get some mm -hmm. excerpts to see some information. Exactly, yes. For free. I, and, and that is, I think education is so important mm -hmm. to understand what's involved in the transition. And the right. more they know, the more successful they'll, they'll be. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. You're I very really welcome. Enjoyed this very Thank much. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed meeting our guest, Dee Casio, as much as I have. And if you're thinking about retirement, you'll pick up on some of her tips. If you know a woman who's gone above and beyond to contribute to our community, please email us. We're Women's World TV at AOL.com. Remember, it's a woman's world. I'm Carolyn Bruna. See you next time.